All right, everybody, hope you are doing good. Today we are talking about crypto. I just, I'm getting a lot of questions about should Christians invest in crypto or in Bitcoin? Um, what does the Bible say about cryptocurrency? Uh, is it evil? You know, whatever. Is Bitcoin biblically responsible? All these different questions keep coming in. And, and it makes sense because Bitcoin is on a little bit of a run. Uh, if we look at the last year or so, let me pull it up real quick. Uh, it is up 135% in the last year, which is, you know, a pretty big run. And it's just been stair-stepping its way up over the last year. And this is what happens <laughs> when it starts going up. I start getting a lot more questions about it. And so I figured, let's talk about this a little bit. But I will say this, on January 21st of 2023, if you go back and find the podcast episode that released that day, January 21st, 2023, I uh, did an episode off of an article that I read that I think is, uh, it should be required listening or reading for um everyone when it comes to Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. Um, basically, he said everything that it's like, that's exactly what I want to say. Uh, so go check that out if you're remotely interested in all this stuff. And if you haven't at all, or if you have questions about crypto and you're like, ah, it feels like a big scam, like, please go listen to that first. That will be really, really helpful for you. But um, a little bit of my backstory on crypto and kind of um, where I started all this. I started like most people, like, oh, that's just a scam. And that's kind of where, what I thought, where I was with everything. And, um, and I've been on a journey. And I've since, you know, uh, in about 2019, I made my first investment into Bitcoin. It was at, um, if I remember right, it was about $5,000 or so, um, something like that. And um, we've since watched that increase quite a bit. I bought Ethereum at that point as well. And that was at about $400. And I watched that go up over 10x over a period of a year and a half or two or something like that. And so uh, so that was the good. So I had some good moments in it. And then I watched, you know, like everybody else, I guess at the end of 2021 is when this big cold crypto winter started and when all... Um, Pretty much everything just dropped like crazy over the next year, year and a half. And so I've watched, you know, a lot of things go down a whole bunch as well. And anyway, in about 2021, yeah, 2021, somewhere in there, I really started digging in. And so I knew a little bit about crypto and Bitcoin and all that, but it was about 2021 where I really just started spending a lot of time and energy reading everything I could find on it, watching every video I could find on it. Anyway, all that to say, I'm invested probably 100, 150 hours of time just kind of researching and understanding, um, yeah, to the best of my ability, what's going on in the crypto space, what matters, how this applies to us as Christians. And this is kind of where I've landed with all this. And so I just have a few thoughts I just wanted to share kind of today with all this. So uh, as you probably know, you know, as it pertains to us as Christians, the Bible doesn't say anything specifically about cryptocurrency, right? Like, I think we all know that. But uh, in Proverbs 13, it does talk about something um, that I think applies to um, cryptocurrencies for a lot of Christians investing in them. And it says, wealth from get-rich-quick schemes quickly disappears, okay? Or put in, I believe it's the Living Bible, it translates it like this, wealth from gambling quickly disappears, Okay, so that begs the question, what is gambling? Okay, and I think we tend to think of gambling just as like going to the casino, you know, and pulling the slot machine. But the truth is there is a big difference between a professional poker player and then someone who's paying slots, okay? And so I would argue that the person playing slots is gambling and then the professional poker player is actually working, okay? And I'm not like vouching um, for that as a career or anything like that, but... The point is that professional poker player has done the research, has honed his craft, developed his skill, studies his opponents, and knows and understands his odds, okay? And if he's actually going to remain a professional poker player, like I have met professional poker players who do this for a living. Um, I actually have a couple people who I know who do this or have long seasons of doing this successfully, Um you know, and so for those people, like this was a job. It was not gambling. So even though they were doing a thing that some people do to gamble, for them, it was not gambling because of their knowledge and their understanding of it. Okay. Does that make sense? So point is, but when you pull the slot machine, 
like uh, unless you have some sort of insider knowledge like it is all to chance and the reality is that is gambling like it is strictly on the odds you have no um no reason to believe that those odds are in your favor okay but when you are a well-educated professional poker player uh playing a game like that or blackjack or something like this some of these games where um yeah it's it's different because it's not just dependent on the odds um so in those situations we we have is someone who i don't know in, in my view like isn't really gambling okay so kind of tying all this up to the world of stocks you know this is similar with investing, okay? Because on one hand, you have someone who knows nothing about a particular stock or company and goes and puts money into it. And I would say that they're gambling, even though they're investing in a stock, you know? If they don't know anything about it, don't understand what they're doing, don't understand the risks, don't understand the odds, then from my vantage point, they're gambling. Now, on the other hand, someone who researches that particular stock or investment really, really well, understands what they're doing, understands the risk, I don't think that they're gambling. I think they're investing. They're taking a calculated risk to determine, um, you know, with the potential upside and a potential downside, but they're calculating that risk and making a decision based on that, okay? So again, like I said before, the point is two people can put money into the same thing, and for one, it can be gambling, and for the other, it can be an investment, okay? And just as a little aside here, this isn't a black and white distinction to where um, it's just like, clear cut, but it's more of a continuum. Okay. And, you know, so having education is the best way to move towards the investing side and away from the gambling side. Okay. And if you want our help, we have an investing course called our 10 X investing course, or we help you do that. <laughs> we help you if you know nothing about investing to get started and to begin doing it wisely and to follow my exact system and my process that I've used. So you can check that out if you want, but this brings us all back to this original question of like whether or not Bible-believing Christians should be investing in crypto, okay? And the biggest problem I see with this right now is that there are far too many people, including Christians, who are gambling by putting money into crypto rather than investing in it, okay? And so back to Proverbs 13, wealth from gambling quickly disappears, okay? But if you are investing, wealth from investing it doesn't say wealth from investing quickly disappears. And I would argue that it's the opposite. Wealth from investing increases, right? So to kind of add to this and to make matters worse, like I've seen far too many people who are pouring their life savings into crypto and not understanding the risk reward ratio, okay? And we go all further into this in our 10X course, if you're interested in doing that, um, who aren't using sound wisdom, and I believe part of wise investing is diversifying and not putting all of your eggs in one basket. Ecclesiastes talks about this. It's specifically, like this is fascinating, but the book of Ecclesiastes specifically talks about diversifying to seven or eight uh, different investments because you don't know what type of misfortune may come, okay? And so this is really tempting to do the all your eggs in one basket. Let's put all my money into this one crypto coin that I think is going to 10X next month. Because you see some 22-year-old crypto millionaire on YouTube or something. And, and that is going to happen because that is just random chance. And so you are going to have people with this level of phenomenal success uh, by luck, by gambling. Just like you go into a casino and you see people who pull the slot machine and walk away with a lot of money. Sometimes, but most times they don't, right? And so when it comes down to crypto, it's really easy to gamble, Okay. And I think this is the big temptation that has to be um, resisted, right? And so like all biblical wisdom here, it isn't to steal our fun, but it's to protect us, okay? And so with all that in mind, I believe the key to investing in crypto properly is to understand the risks and to know what and why you are investing in. So kind of pulling all this back a little bit, what I've discovered in uh, everything that I've kind of dug into with crypto is that cryptocurrency can be a, uh, a currency or it can be a store of value, okay? And so for me, when it comes down to it, Bitcoin or some other crypto um, is a store of value, right? And, and specifically Bitcoin, because it is different than all the other cryptocurrency. And I'm not going to get into all that here just for simplicity, but it is different. And it is a store of value, just like you know, gold is, or like some precious metals are, you know, 
And the truth is, like, if we look back in our Bible, there are different forms of currency. Like, one of the earliest forms of currency was livestock. Like, that was a store of value. And specifically, it says in Genesis 13, it says, Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. And I think it's so fascinating that it specifically mentions livestock as the first thing. You know what I mean? Which implies that that was the biggest store of his value, of his wealth, was in his livestock. So the point with all this is that there have been various forms of currency over the last few thousand years. And I don't think it's necessarily a cause for concern that new ones like Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies are emerging. Like that to me doesn't freak me out. And so for all the people who have been asking, like, is Bitcoin the one world currency that the Bible speaks of? I don't, I don't think that personally. Like I, I think there's no doubt that the current events that are going on are paving the way for the end times. But, but I believe that Bitcoin and really a lot of other crypto assets are more of a stepping stone to it than the actual one world currency itself, okay? And so without getting into all the technical details, like Bitcoin just isn't currently suited as an everyday currency that we would use at the grocery store or Amazon. And who knows, maybe it'll evolve into that or something. But, um, but beyond that, it's also decentralized. So in theory... Um, in, in theory, no government could actually control it. And, you know, and to be honest, that's part of the like allure for people who are preparing for a cashless society where the market beast is required to buy and sell food. This is from Revelation 13, 17. And so we obviously have no idea how all this is going to unfold. Um, but I certainly understand the allure of Bitcoin in that no one can control it. Like that's real, really cool as far as I'm concerned. And so there's an article from Sharecast that kind of seconds my thought on this. And I'll just kind of read this to you. So it says, biblical advocates claim Bitcoin would be a one world currency used to gain control over the global economy. Bitcoin undoubtedly supports seamless cross-border transactions, but also faces potential regulatory challenges that will continually impact its application and value over time. Besides, Bitcoin is decentralized currency, not subjected to any political or institutional influences. Therefore, it would not be possible for any authority to regulate its usage. According to Christians, the beast's mark will prevent those who refuse it from buying and selling. However, Bitcoin's decentralization eliminates the possibility of such control. Bitcoin will support global transactions, but no one could ever control its utility. Okay. And, and again, like I'm, uh, whenever someone says never, I, I, I always get a little bit nervous uh, or uneasy about that because there's just too many things that people have said can never happen that end up happening. But point is that um, it's not likely that Bitcoin would end up being the one world, you know, currency or something like that. So kind of looking at how I am investing in crypto at this point, not gambling, but investing in it. Um, and I would say that uh, just as a little bit of a preface, like for all of my investable assets, only about 10% are actually in crypto because it is so speculative, right? And some people would say that that's too high, you know? So please do not become one of those people um, who email me and say, I put my lifetime in whatever new coin, my life savings in whatever new coin because I thought I'd be rich in two months and I lost it all. Um, the number of stories that I've heard like this over the last couple of years are just really, really saddening. Um, so please don't do that. So if you are going to invest in anything, please make this a small percentage of your investable assets. Okay. So the foundation that we teach is we teach a foundation of, um, index funds or ETFs that are generally based off of the U S, um, stock market in one way or another. That's kind of the foundation. That's where you start. Beyond that, if you want to invest in some other alternative investments, uh, like some specific stocks, again, we go into all this in our 10X investing course if you're interested. Um, real estate is another good foundational investment, or that could be a secondary investment as well. But those in general are going to be far less volatile, speculative um, in general, you know, casting a wide net here than most cryptocurrency that you would buy. And therefore, if you're going to invest in crypto, make it a small percentage of the amount that you're investing. Got it? Hopefully we're all on the same page on that. So if I look back at my last, uh, I guess, two and a half years of different crypto investments that I've made, I would say I've probably invested in 30 to 40 different 
coins um, or crypto assets in one way or another. I've been in and out of a lot of different ones. I've tried and experimented with a lot of things because, again, this is what I view my job as. Um, you know, I'm testing it first before I'm ever talking to you about it. And I want to take those risks with my money and experiment with mine so that you don't have to, you know. And so anyway, so out of that, um, I've been, I started with Bitcoin, kind of went down the line, got into more and more speculative stuff, tried a lot of different things. And really, I've kind of like come back to Bitcoin being the thing that I am most interested in and excited um, in for the long term. So yeah, I'm becoming more and more uh, optimistic about the long-term future of Bitcoin. And so um, I am not your financial advisor, so I'm not going to give you financial advice. Uh, you can go find a financial advisor if you want to do that. But what I will say, if I were starting right now and I wanted to put some money into some form of crypto, that that would be where I would start. So that's where I started a few years ago kind of moved off of that more and more and I've kind of ultimately landed back on Bitcoin and um, and I've done a lot of research on Bitcoin to understand it and to understand its application in the world and uh, I don't know it just left me in a place where I'm very optimistic about it now obviously we don't know what's going to happen uh, but uh, the majority of our crypto that we earn um, would definitely be Bitcoin at this point and that's where I'm continuing to add more and more money so just letting you know where I am and what I'm doing. But again, this is not financial advice for you. You need to um, find a financial advisor if you're looking for specific financial advice for your situation. But we do have a cryptocurrency essentials um, kind of mini course that I kind of created, which was basically me going through the hundred plus hours of research and then curating that down to the most important things to be able to help you understand and move forward on your own crypto journey. So if you're interested in that, send me a DM. We don't have it publicly available on the site, but um, I can get you a link to get enrolled in that if that's something you're, that you're interested in. Um, send me an email, bob at seedtime.com or a DM me at seedtime on Instagram and we can get that for you. But anyway, yeah. So if you know somebody who's looking at, who keeps asking you questions about crypto, keeps talking about crypto, wants to do it, um, Start them um, with this podcast episode or the one from January 21st, 2023. And that is all we have for you today. Hope you have a fantastic day. Be blessed, be a blessing, and we'll see you in the next one. All right. We want to know if you've heard about our flagship class called True Financial Freedom. Yeah. And if you haven't, it's more than just a money class. Mm -hmm. It's really about fulfilling your God-given purpose, breaking free from hidden money beliefs and making a lasting impact. Yeah, and we've gotten feedback from students and they've said things like, it is the first class I've taken where at the end of each session, I felt equipped and not burdened. Yeah, and it's less theory and more realistic action steps and guidance. We've also heard it felt like a conversation with friends, which is awesome. Yeah, and it encouraged me in ways I didn't think I would ever experience. This class is on demand and it's designed for churches and small groups as well as individuals. And you can get all the details at seedtime.com slash TFF.